Hello, viewers. Welcome to another exciting episode on coordinate geometry one. Under this episode, we'll be picking the gradient of a straight line. How to find the gradient. When you're looking for the gradient, we are just looking for the steepness of that straight line with respect to the x-axis. How far has the line sway away from the x-axis? So in this episode, as we are picking our coordinates, x and y plane, the blue line shows the gradient, uh, shows the straight line. The straight line that we are looking for, this is the straight line. The gradient of this straight line is how far it moves away from the straight line. So the line from the x-axis, sorry, the line could be in this direction, in this direction, or this plane. In which direction is the line moving? How far is it moving away from the x-axis? The steepness. How steep is the line from the x-axis? In this direction, we can take these two points to be the point that is used to draw the straight line. You know, if I want to draw a straight line, I need at least two points. Two points on the line. So if I have this point and this point, then I know the line is passing through this direction. If I have this point and this point, and I know the line is passing through this direction. So that point is here and there. So if we label here as A and B, we know that since we are in the XY plane, we need the coordinate of those uh, points. So in this case, on the X axis, we can have this the first X. This is the origin. So the first x, then we have the second x. The same vein, if I want to locate a point here, which will have a dimension here, I have my y1, then this will also have our y2. The distance between this very point, which is just here, we are only extending it to this place, this point, the distance here, between here and here, will be y2 minus y1. I'm looking for the distance here. Here. So if I know here to be 4, 7, it means 7 minus 4 give me the distance between this very uh, line. Then in the same direction, I'll be looking for x2, x1. The difference between them which will be the x2, x1. So if I'm looking for the gradient, which is M, we use M to indicate the gradient, is going to be the rise. The rise on how far does the, the line rise towards the x-axis. That rise is y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1. So the change on the y-axis as divided by the change on the x-axis. That is the, the rise, the rise, then the, the run. So this is how the gradient of the straight line will be derived. Now, we could also say that the distance here could mean the movement from the y1, y2. We could also have it y1 y, y minus what? y2. Then the same vein, as I am moving in that direction, I could also say y1 minus y2, uh, the x1 minus x2. So if you are using the second y, it means the second x must be used. But if you use the first y, then the first x must also be used. So this is how the gradient will be derived. Now, we have different uh, types of gradient based on each movement with respect to the x-axis. Now, the one we are seeing in this direction will give us a positive gradient. So this is an example of a positive gradient. So whether it is direct like this, or it falls close to the x-axis, or it is almost closer to the y-axis, we will always get a positive value. We also have a straight line that will give us a negative gradient. Let's see how that will look like. Okay. 
Now, in the case whereby the line is moving in this direction, I'm only using the origin for expansion stick. The line can pass through any direction. It can cut the y-axis through this way. As long as it is rising on the left and falling on the right, we are going to have the same uh, concept of the gradient. This is the negative gradient because in this uh, quadrant, you can see the values on the x-axis is going to be negative. Then the values on the y-axis will be positive. So you know if you divide uh, a number by negative, your result will be a negative. So we know this will also be the point where the first y will be. This is also going to be the point where the second y will be. Here, the first x, then the second x. So obviously, the distance on the change on the x-axis, the line which is parallel to the x-axis, will still be x2 minus x1, which is the run. Then here, we are going to have the distance to be y2 minus what? y1. The gradient will still be y2, y1 as the change on the y axis over x2 minus what? x1, which is also going to be the change on the, the x axis. So here we can see that both x and y are positive. So we have a positive gradient. Here y is positive, x is negative. So we have a negative gradient. So this is the second type of what? Gradient. But we have four different types. So we are dealing with the first, second, the positive gradient and a negative gradient. Now, there are cases whereby the line may not move in this direction nor in that direction. It may also be either perpendicular to the x-axis or horizontal to the x-axis, which will also be perpendicular to the y-axis. So let's see how we can describe that gradient also. Okay. So let's look at the first one. So this is be the number three, and this will be number four. But let's see. Here we are going to use real numbers. That is, we will not be using the x1, x2. Let's use the values to explain before we generalize the formula. Now, we remember we mentioned that to get a straight line, we need at least two points on the line. So let me just indicate the first point here, the second point here. It could be the first point, second point. There's two points on the line. Now, if I want to find the coordinate of that point, so let's just say I am having one. This line here has what? Two. Then three. Let's say I have one, two, and three. So the coordinate here is going to be the point on the x-axis will be two, on the y-axis will be 3. Here, the point on the x-axis will still be 2. The point on the y-axis will be 1. So if we want to use the formula that we derive, which is gradient equals to y2 minus y1, x2 minus what? x1. So in this case, this is our first x, because this is a. This is b. So x1, x2 y1, y2. So y2 will be 1, y1 will be 3, x2 will be 2, then we have this. I believe here will be giving us minus 2 divided by what? 0. So we know if we divide a number by 0, it is undefined. So this is going to be the gradient, undefined gradient. We have a gradient that cannot be defined. So this is going to be undefined. Before we come to that conclusion, let's also pick a point here. Let's say I have a point and a point A and B. If I indicate 1, 2, 3, and 4, 1, 2, okay, 3, and 4. Let's find the coordinates for A. On the x-axis, I have 1, on the y-axis, I have 3. On the x-axis, I'll be having 4. On the y-axis, I'll still have what? 3. So fast forward. If I have the gradient, 
equals to x2. This is the x1, y1. And x2, y2. So we begin with y2 first. Which will be 3 minus y1. Which will be 3. Then x2 will be 4. x1 will be 1. So obviously 0 divided by 3 will give you 0. So here we are having a 0 gradient. So if the line is perpendicular to the x-axis or parallel to the y-axis, we have undefined gradient. Then if the line is perpendicular to the y-axis and parallel to the x-axis, we have that to be a 0 gradient. So these are all straight lines. So the line could either be, we can have a positive gradient or we have a negative gradient or undefined gradient, then we have a zero gradient. So these are the four different types of gradient that we have, depending on the direction of the straight line. So take note of this. If the straight line is parallel to the x-axis, we have its definition. If it is perpendicular to the x-axis, we have its definition. If it is rising from the right and falling on the left, which is positive, then rising from the left, falling on the right, we have negative. These are the four different types of gradient. Now, how do we find gradient? Now, there are three ways by which we can find the gradient of a line. The first one could be when we are giving two points on the line, just like we are doing, you know, y1, y2, y, x1, x2. If the two points on the line, just like a, b, are given, I can easily find this, uh, the gradient, right? Good. Then, in other ways, we can also have the inclined angle or angle of inclination. When we want to find, okay, let me mention all the three before. Then we can also find the gradient from an equation of the straight line. So let's delve into that. If I have this, and let me just use the positive one for explanation sake. This is the straight line. We can see that if I find a point here and a point here, after I draw this to be parallel to this, this to be parallel to the y-axis, you can see that there will be an angle here. The angle of inclination. Don't forget this line also makes an angle with the x-axis. So if this line is parallel to the x-axis, these two angles are corresponding. Right? So if I am asked to find the gradient, and I know the angle of inclination, I can easily find what? The, the gradient, meaning here will be the change on the y-axis, then here will be the change on the x-axis. So we are making use of the opposite side and the adjacent. Remember, this is going to be right angle triangle. So the gradient will be opposite adjacent, which is going to be tan, right? Tan theta equals to the opposite side, which will be the change in the y-axis over the hypotenuse, uh, the adjacent, right? Which is going to be x-axis. What formula is the change in the y-axis over a change in the x-axis? That is the gradient. So the gradient here equals to just the term of the angle. Meaning, if I'm asked to find the gradient, when the angle of inclination is given, I'm only going to find the tan of the angle. Angle 40, angle 60, angle 100. Whatever angle that is there, I find the tan of the angle to be equal to the gradient. Alright. Then, we can also find it when we were given an equation. Right? So, we know equation of a straight line, general form, could be ax plus by plus c equals to zero. If I'm asked to find a gradient, m will just be negative a over b, the coefficient of the x over the coefficient of the y. That 
that give you the gradient if it is in general form in this way then if the equation is also in this form as the intercept slope form if it is in this form your gradient is going to be m which is the coefficient of x whatever that is in front of x become the gradient i guess we are okay these are the three ways by which you can find gradient of a straight line so in the next episode we will take various questions that we can use to explain the concept that we just developed from here don't forget to share like comment and subscribe bye, -bye.